everybody, it's Seriously Sydney, and this is Learning to Paint with, or Learning to Oil Paint, Part 3. So my goal for today was to deepen the background, give it the more shadow tones, since I had gone in with the mid-tones before, and kind of, like, define everything. I wanted the background to be very separate from the frog. And then from the top, so on the top I have the colors that I'm mixing, and from the left we have titanium white, cad yellow medium, cad red medium, phthalo blue, and van dyke brown. And that is what I'm using to mix all these different colors. I'm getting a little bit better with mixing with the palette knife, so something you just, you really have to use it I guess with force. And then I'm using this um, Golden Taclon Filbert brush. I don't know the size or the brand name, but I could guess it's somewhere around a size, ooh, maybe eight? Uh, probably six or five. So where I'm going in and I'm adding, I made it really dark because I wanted the frog to stand out from the background because as it sat before, it was a little bit too dull. And then I used the linseed oil and something I'm noticing, it makes the colors very vivid, like it's very deep and rich. is something very different from watercolor because like yes over time certain paints are much more pigmented but it just this has such a different feel to it So right here I'm going in and I'm creating another tone for the background. This one's going to be, it was a little bit more purple tone, so that's why you noticed um, a large amount of red. And something interesting, so it is, a, since I'm using a limited color palette, I can actually mix the color like of burnt sienna and stuff, which I hadn't anticipated. I mean, theoretically you can mix all the colors, but... I ended up getting a tone very similar to Burt Sienna, which was nice. And then the little um, white specks I put on there are for, um, like, little, if there were little flowers or different highlights in the background through the trees or bushes or whatever the background looks like. And at some point uh, later, as it dried a little bit, I went and um, not really smoothed it out, but like blended it in a little bit more.
right here I'm mixing a more of like a viridian or phthalo green that is kind of the tone I was going for with this little mixture Excuse the background noise. Ooh, so right here I'm working on the red toned flower. And so I was going for like a, a dusty red color for part of it. And then that brush right there I was using, that's the brush I was using for the linseed oil. So, I really liked the effect it had. It allowed, I just, I really like the texture and everything. It reminded me of the, the people who paint those, um, acrylic florals, um, on their canvases and, like, pieces of wood. That's what it reminded me of a little bit. Now if I were to talk about the technique I'm using here, it's called trial and error, and ooh, that might be a good idea, why don't I try that? It's a very, very sophisticated technique. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I'm building up so the edges on both the end of the petal and then the part of the petal towards the center are going to be the darkest and build up to where the center is the brightest and I'm trying it. I'm going to try to do that on both flowers. point I decided to cover up the little what's going to be um, the eyes of the flower and its tongue because I could always add that in later and right now trying to paint around it wasn't really working. And since you guys have nearly made it to the end, um, a special word for this video to comment down in the comment section to let me know you guys have watched this far will be rose because of the dusty rose color that I painted. Anyway, if you guys liked this video and want to see more, don't forget to um, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications, and hit the like button. And I will see you guys next week. Until then, have an art-tastic week.
Thank you.